Tonight's red versus blue Taekwondo matches at GB Taekwondo's training centre in Manchester. First up this evening, we have Bradley Sindon versus Marco Bolivic. Bradley Sindon. Bradley Sindon, Great Britain Zone in red. He's 23 years old. He is the 2019 world champion and the 2021 Olympic silver medalist. Coming in from Doncaster, Great Britain. 
tonight he is fighting Marko Golovic from Croatia. 21 years old, he's currently ranked 47th in the world, but having won the gold medal at the Dutch, German and Croatian Open, it's safe to say he'll be moving up the rankings in no time. These guys have been training together a bit this week, and they've had some good good sessions matching up against each other. Marco slightly taller than Bradley, Bradley that little bit more experienced. Let's see who can get the better of each other tonight. <laughs> Good to have the crowd in tonight. Each member of the crowd has been given either a red or a blue bracelet suggesting who they should support tonight. So there's no home team advantage for Bradley. This will all be based on what bracelet you've been given on the way in. Just sorting out a few technical difficulties with the system before these guys get back underway. Here we go. <laughs> Early exchange. The Croatian coach already getting involved, doing his bit to try and earn Marco some points. But the referee and the system don't agree. Bradley able to get one up over the top. Three points, headshot, really nice in the clinch. Bit of figuring each other out, first blood to the Brit. Good exchange in the clinch there. I said Marko Gulabic from Croatia. He's had a couple of really good results at Opens since moving up into the senior ranks. Going to present a real challenge for Bradley. Especially with those long legs. The blue fans getting behind the Croatian. Great movement from the two fighters. Croatian going for a spinning kick. Unfortunate not to land. And conceding a gamjong in the exchange. Snipes high at the start of that exchange there. Bradley the better for it. But if one of those lands, it's pretty safe to say Bradley's going to know about it. It's been a lively first round already. Both Bradley and Marco not scared, willing to get involved. Another gamjong against the car. These two did have a fight earlier on in the day. Bradley got the better of that one. Marco seemed unwilling to fight in the clinch. But so far in this fight, he's been a bit more active when it's going there. And he's earned himself two points with a body shot. Getting the blue fans going. Those long legs, he's definitely going to be dangerous at distance. Bradley likes to fight in close, so that's safe to say where Bradley will be heading. Cover from the from the blue. Saving himself from conceding any points there. Strong punch from Bradley, not awarded by the referees. And that is the end of the first round. Lively, lively interaction between the two.
And here we go for the second round. Straight from the half to Croatian lad. Getting stuck in, looking for points early doors. Exactly what he needs to do with it. Bit the score sitting at 6 2. Big spinning kick. If that one had landed, I'm pretty sure Bradley would have been shaking his head a little bit. Can't lie. The crowd would have loved to see that one landed. Just shows how dangerous he is. Strong travelling from Bradley. That front leg up, posing a risk. He can score from a lot of places. And when he's moving at that pace, Marco's been awarded for the punch there, so that's now 6 3. Outstanding scorpion kick from Bradley there. You do not see many of those on the circuit. What a headshot from Bradley Sindon. That was a treat. Marco will be pleased to win a couple of points back on the way in there. One minute to go in this round. Lively legs from Bradley. He snuck his foot up through the middle. He's able to run a headshot through the, through the middle and then again round the back. So two headshots piled on, short, short exchange there. Taking the score to 15-5 with 40 seconds to go. Some really, really high quality Taekwondo on show here from these two fighters. Marco in blue, not hiding from it. Oh! That was a big attempt at a headshot from Marco. He concedes a gamdrum for his trouble. <laughs> if any one of these lands at any moment, it could be a busy night for the physios. 16-5 to Bradley at the moment. 15 seconds to go in this round. Gamdrum being given here against Bradley. Takes it to 16-6, 10 point difference. Great work rate from both these fighters. And that is time. End of the second round. One more round to go. 10 points the difference. <laughs> MC trying to get the crowd rolled up, ready for this one. 16-6 to red at the moment, but with some of the headshots that Blue has been throwing, anything could happen in this round. Great opening to this red versus blue evening at GB Taekwondo in Manchester. Oh, great headshot there from Bradley. He kept his leg up and persisted with it and got his reward at the end. Marco is coming back strong as the two of them take each other to the ground. I think Bradley earned himself another headshot in the mix. Scores now sitting at 22-9. Great fight we have on our hands. The strong front leg there from Marco is covered by Bradley. Figuring each other out. It was a minute 30 to go. Plenty more time for action. Bradley again. 
done that a few times this fight, travelling on one leg, using his front leg, different angles, keep Marco guessing. Throwing multiple shots. Unsuccessful on each. But we've seen him earlier on score multiple shots in that situation, so he's right to go for it. A little over one minute to go. It's been a serious pace for the last five minutes of this fight. Sure to slow down for a little bit, but I have a feeling though in these two we're in for a big last minute. Rattling shots in on each other's body armor. Just missing on registering for points. Kick over the back from Marco. Reminiscent of one Bradley threw earlier in the fight. Some outstanding kicks on show from both these both these fighters. Twenty three seconds to go on the clock. Are we looking for a big flow at the end? Bradley looking for points more points on the board. Marco. Perhaps looking for a knockout with ten seconds to go. Almost snuck one round as Bradley was lay low. Oh! Huge spinning kick attempt from Marco Gulovic there. Bradley ends the gamdrum. Marco won't be oh, Bradley almost snuck one round the back himself. And that is the end of what was an excellent fight. Bradley Sindon in red and Marco Gulovic in blue. Great Britain and Croatia respect. Bradley Sindon here, how do you feel your uh, performance went down tonight? Um, I got better the second two rounds. Started in Swiss first one, what big job. Nice. He was throwing some big headshots there and if any one of those had landed, I think he would have felt them. Is that something you have to be wary of? Well, I've got a big head, so, you know, it, it, it takes some shots like a champ. You do have a seriously big head. Thank you very much, Bradley Sindon. Well done for tonight. Start in red, we have Jacob Fairhead fighting against Reese Turner.
show support here for both these fighters. Jacob Fairhead in red. Relatively new into the program at GB Taekwondo, came joined by a th fighting chance last summer. Oh Reese Turner currently coming through the Junior Academy here at GB Taekwondo. But proven to be a really promising young Taekwondo player. And the age gap between these two isn't that big. So it's going to be an interesting one to see how it plays out. Merle exchanges from these two fighters. Jacob normally fights down at minus 58 kilos. As a result, the work rate at these lighter weight categories tends to be extremely high. We've got an early points on the board from Reese in blue. But Jacob is looking live in, looking for opportunities to level this score back up. Again, amongst the crowd, we've got a mixture of people in from sponsors and friends of GB Taekwondo, and each is being given either a red band or a blue band to designate who they're to support tonight. So there's no support in your friends, no support in your home nation, purely based on who you have been allocated to, red or blue. Jacob looking for the head a couple of times there, unlucky not quite to connect. 30 seconds to go in the first round, still the only points on the board. Coming from Reese Turner in blue. Jacob looking for a punch there. Gamjong given instead. Jacob goes for a headshot. Reese manages to just move out of the way in time. And there ends the first round. Plenty of action. Now we just need the points to match. Incredibly handsome Romain Bailey in Reese Tur Turner's corner, giving him all the coaching advice, and the equally handsome Martin Stamper in Jacob's corner. Saw sure they've been getting into their fighters, giving them advice, and Reese is able to sneak a headshot early in this round, taking the, the score to 6 0. That is exactly what he was looking to do. Romain will be more than happy with that. Reese Turner, like I said, having still currently in the GB Junior Academy. He's got good pedigree coming up through that. Having won a Junior Dutch Open Gold last year, or in 2020, sorry, and the 2020 Junior Helsingborg Open Gold. 
corner judges getting involved here. Coach not too happy with this punch being given, but it goes on nonetheless. Although for now, it's gone on the wrong side. That point should be going over, making it 7-0 currently to Reese Turner. Plenty more action to come tonight. Currently, Jacob Fairhead versus Reese Turner. Coming up after this, we've got a heavyweight battle between Great Britain's Caden Cunningham and Croatia's Ivan Sapina. Sapina got a huge amount of pedigree internationally. Caden, not long come into the senior program. But in the time he's been in the program, he's developed a huge amount. And we've seen some pr really promising results come on for him since joining the academy. So if he can put some of that into practice tonight, he's going to give Sabina a lot to think about. Shot from Jacob. Doesn't look like it scored anything there. Should have been a gamdrang at least going on for Reese going to floor. The referee's nodding. I don't think he did see it because he didn't put it on, but it goes on now. So 7 1 is the score. Jacob gets more points on the board. Given a punch there, I believe. Reese is able to return with two points of his own. Now Jacob's starting to get some points on the board. Hopefully he can build on that. Jacob, an extremely fit fighter, and he'll be looking to use that as this fight progresses. Going into the second minute of the second round. If he can use his fitness and keep pushing the junior fighter and potentially he can bring this score back and start to challenge for the win Reese is getting some issues with his pads and we go again Reese with a good punch there and it's given by the judges really solid but you can see the Gamdrung as well for grabbing and they remove that punch shame fighters stabbing with their front leg working distance fighting for dominance in the middle of the ring neither fighter seems able to exert their dominance and their timing on the fight Reese Turner crouching down there Jay can almost capitalise on it Reese is going to have to be careful that one sneaks a shot up on a spinning shot up and he's really unlucky not to make contact with the head there both fighters going for big kicks that is what we like to see a few more of them please lads another gamdron against Reese Turner I think that one was for kicking low and again for grabbing can he steady the ship now second round's ended we've got one more round to go Jacob's starting to come back into the fight all to play for as it's 5-9 to blue
Here we go, third and final round. Things to look out for in this round are Jacob pushing the pace, trying to win this fight back after being 5 9 down. Reese Turner attempting to hold it out. And finally, Reese Turner was sick after his first fight of the day. So who knows, at the end of this one, there is a bucket next to the ring. It might be needed as well. Jacob lost his balance there, and Reese capitalizes with a headshot ruthlessly as Jacob falls to the ground. Makes him 13 five points up. Jacob with some work to do as we go into a minute 30 to go in this fight. Working for dominance in the clinch. Big spinning efforts by players. For the lightweight fighters, these two are going for the occasional big kick. And again, corner judges think they've seen something here. Gamjong against Blue. It's going to take more than Gamjongs, I think, for Jacob here, though. He needs to start scoring some of these kicks as Reese stabs him to the ground and that'll be a gamjong against him strong stab from Reese Turner there perhaps starting to really control the ring now There's one minute to go in this fight Jacob pushing forward Plenty of fight left in him, Jacob. And he's got the fitness to keep pushing. That's exactly what he's going to have to do this fight. He's got a lot of work to do in this final round. Nine points down. He needs to find some shots from somewhere. Goes for a punch. And it looks like the corner judges might be giving it. Given. Takes him to seven. And we go again. Some strong kicks from Reese. Not scoring kicks, but they keep Jacob at distance. And importantly, they stop Jacob from scoring any of his own. He glances back at his coach, Jacob. Looking for advice. Chasing Reese out of the ring. Reese trying to be clever now with how he operates in this fight not concede what could be two, three points within a kick. So taking a gamble and stepping out of the ring. Points have been put on the wrong side here, I think. get the points the right way around on the scoreboard here. Takes an 8-14. Try again lively with 15 seconds to go. Jacob working hard. Reese fencing, keeping, keeping the gaps. 10 seconds to go now. Jacob looking for points. Reese just trying to survive. Got six gun guns against him, so it's not going to be a disqualification. But he definitely doesn't want to be conceding easy points at the end there. And there we have it. It finishes 8-14 to Blue. Good effort from the two young fighters. Blue wins.
comes even subpoena even subpoena he's young 22 years old he's already had a big impact in international taekwondo competed in the olympic games last year in tokyo 2021 European bronze medalist, 2019 world bronze medalist. They don't give those away for free. He knows how to win Taekwondo matches. Against Caden Cunningham, only 18 years old. Currently ranked 138. But with the lack of action that he's been able to have at major competitions due to COVID, I'm pretty sure He'll be climbing the ranks now that competitions are opening back up. So as I said, even subpoena. European bronze medalist last year that went on to compete at Tokyo Olympic Games. Caden Cunningham, perhaps best known for losing to Cisse in the Spanish Open final. But also having won 2019 French Open gold medal and 2019 Luxembourg gold medal. He started to string some really strong performances together hitting a few podiums in his new weight category at heavyweight and I know for a fact he has been relishing the opportunity to fight even Sapina here tonight this is the fight he's been looking forward to all week so Caden the British fighter in blue even Sapina in red from Croatia despite what the scorecard says, Croatian fighter. No home field advantage for Caden now. The crowd been allocated who they are to support, and half the crowd have been given red bands. And they are here to support even Sapina in this fight. So one fight goes on for Sapina now. Strong kick from Sapina, but it doesn't register. Caden battling for position back, looking to cover these shots. Miller, Caden's coach, speaking to him from the corner. Heavyweight battles tend to be lower scoring than some of their lightweight counterparts. I think especially in this fight, subpoena can be so dangerous. Caden's picking his opportunity. Oh! Big headshot, big headshot attempt from Caden there. Really unfortunate to land it. He's smiling, he's happy. He's enjoying being out there fighting against his high quality opposition. Caden joined GB Taekwondo Academy a couple of years ago. At which point I think he was about five foot tall. Big spinning shot from Sapina. Just misses. Caden yeah, joined us about five foot tall and about 70 kilos. In that short space of time, he's grown to well over six foot. And now weighing in, getting close to 90 kilos, moving him into the heavyweight category, where he's really enjoying doing his work.
for round two of this heavyweight encounter. Subpoena, bags of experience at senior level. Caden, who at the end of his junior career cut short due to the COVID lockdown and now looking to really make his name on the senior level. Both fighters will have their eyes on the European Championships later on in the year in May. European Championships in May will be held in Manchester as well. We'll be in a bigger venue for that, but good chance we could be seeing these two meet again. So a little taster beforehand. The score currently sitting at 2-1 to Sapina. Tight, close fight. Sapina Kasija Gamjong taking it to 2 all. Looks like the Lion judges seen something here. Awarded by looks of it a punch to Subpoena. Cagey encounter, but when these two come together it's the clinch. There's a lot of weight. Meeting in the middle. You wouldn't want to be caught in the between the two of them. Caden covers the attempted headshot in in the clinch. It's exactly where he needs to be. yet to see the big scoring kick that's going to bring this fight fully to life but it's not been short of action forty five seconds to go of this round as they just try and figure each other out a little bit These heavyweight guys come together, they're picking their shots, they're not throwing as many as the lightweights. But what they're throwing, much harder, much more impactful, much more damaging. Caden going for two shots there, one round the back and one at the front. Subpoena matches him with his cover really well. Fence in there from Caden. Holding back the chopping kick for Subpoena. They give the punch to Subpoena there. That takes it to 4 2. Big swinging kicks from Subpoena, pushing Caden back into the uh, judges' table. Referee not happy with that. And the Croatian coach brings his card up. Asking the referee to check something here. Caden joined the GB Taekwondo team, like I said a couple of years ago, comes from Huddersfield, this is his hometown. Trained with his dad back home during lockdown. In the garden, his dad was joining them in each of the uh, conditioning sessions, strength sessions they were doing together. I'm sure he'll be watching this, probably throwing every kick with Caden as well. Judges agree with the Croatian coach, and in a minute, we'll find out what he agrees with. So, removing the gamdrum from Sapina, giving against Caden. Takes it to 5 2. Last few seconds this round. Gamdrum giving against Sapina. And that is the end of that round. All to play for as we go into the third round now. 5-3. All it could take is one big shot from either fighter. And that could win it. Who is going to t take that opportunity though?
going for a third line. You never know what's going to happen in these heavyweight encounters. And this one will be no different. It's 5-3 to Sapina in red as we go into the third and final round. Caden will be looking for some big shots here. He came close with a headshot earlier. He didn't get the points, but he did earn him a smile. Sapina moves in and he gets a big body shot away. Seven points. He goes for an elaborate shot. They call that as Caden having thrown into the ground. I'm not sure Caden's got a judo throw that big in him. But the referees saw it as that and they've awarded the points to Sapina and takes it to 8-3. In a tight contest so far. Will that be the difference at the end? Another Gumdrum against Caden takes it to 9-3. Caden looks to sneak one up high and again just missing as he travels forward. Sapina on the defensive. <laughs> Little bit of gamesmanship on where they stand in the ring. Sapina, more experienced fighter, he's not having any of it, getting stuck in a corner. Engaging, giving a gambling against him, takes a 10-3. He's looking for his opportunity here. As I said, Sapina, having fought in Tokyo Olympic Games last year, goes for a big spinning kick. Caden wise to it. Caden needs to find something now. 40 seconds to go. The crowd getting behind him. <laughs> Sapina using all of his experience to control the ring, hold the center of the ring. <laughs> Working behind that front leg, controlling the distance really, really well. Caden looking for opportunities, but Sapina is not giving much away. Twenty seconds to go. Caden needs opportunities, and he's not going to get him whilst he's in the clinch like that. <laughs> Big spinning shots from both players. Seven seconds to go. Caden pulls a chop kick. Nowhere near on that one, and that is the end of the fight. 10 4. The experienced Croat wins it for red. But Caden would have learned a lot from that encounter, like I said. European Championships in May, good chance that he's still be fighting again. I'm looking forward to it.
Everyone's favourite fighter in red today, Jay Jones coming from Flint, Wales. Two time Olympic champion, 2019 world champion. Bags of experience. Coming up against Layla Palser. She's making her way out of the Junior Academy right now, our Junior Pathway Programme at GB Taekwondo. Far less experienced than Jay, but I'm sure she's excited to come and get in there and try and make a mark. To Mike Harvey, Jade's coach, talking us through game plan for this. Remain Bailey in Layla's corner. No doubt. Tell her to go out there and enjoy it. If she can scalp Jay Jones here, it will be one to remember for the youngster. Crowds and getting rolled up in the brakes by DJ Pont. Originally from France, the brother of one of our coaches, Taran Mazaroy. Jay Jones barely needs an introduction. Been building a training back up ever since coming back from Tokyo. Got our eyes on some big prizes this year. Starting with the European Championships in May in Manchester, and this is a really good way for her to get used to being in front of a home crowd again. Historically known as the headhunter, and straight away she's going for headshots again. Layla having to battle hard in the clinch against the older fighter. Jade scored early. Three points plus a Gamjan against Layla. Score sits at 4 0. A lot of action. JJ with a sneak headshot up there. Layla hits the ground just afterwards, just from being unbalanced. Score sits at 8 0. fighters keeping busy and Layla showing that she's game for it not scared to go for a headshot herself there's a large amount of our junior academy in the crowd and something tells me that it doesn't matter what band they're wearing right now they're getting behind Layla in blue giving her the support that she no doubt craves Attempted punch, don't think she's going to score that one. Jade just keeping calm, slowing the pace back down again. It's the first round, she doesn't want to get carried away. So fast with the, with the shot there. Doesn't quite land the kick, but Jade, when she goes for that headshot, she can move so quick. Line judges, corner judges have seen something here. Gamjung against Jade, I believe. No, Gamjung against Layla. Jade showing a full arsenal of kicks here. Spinning shots. Coming into the clinch, always following up with something. She's never going into the clinch, just a rare. She's always going in looking for points. Looking for opportunities. You can see the guns up for holding. She'll go right back to work now. Seven seconds to go in this round. And that's time. 9-1 at the three. Great effort from Layla Pulsar so far. Jay Jones doing what she does best. Putting points. 
points on the board in the Taekwondo match. Despite the amount of work done by those two fighters, that is only one round gone. We've got two more left. Layla will be looking to score early, I'm sure. And she is. Putting in shots straight from the off. The referee in the middle seems to be enjoying this. Layla is not letting the world champion rest here for one minute. Jay Jones always looking for points. But part of that's being encouraged by the work rate of Layla in blue. Who keeps pressing, keeps going forward. Four, score currently sits at 14-2 to, to red. Jones being so experienced. One would think Layla and Blue will get a return on some of this effort soon. Sure enough, they'll water a punch there. They'll take it to 14 3. If Layla can find a rhythm, find a distance with some of these punches start to claw a couple of points back gonna force Jay to keep working deep into the third round and for any fighter fatigue's gonna set in eventually score currently 6 16 3 50 seconds to go in the second round Traveling forward well on a base leg, looking for shots with her front leg. Always pressing, always looking for those points. This is exactly what you need to be doing, especially at this senior level as she moves up. Corner judges are seeing something here. Warding a point to Jay Jones, presumably for a punch. Jay sniping for the head. She manages to land one. It's what she's been known for throughout her whole career. Layla goes to ground to avoid any more punishment on that one. He sits at 21 3 as she takes the gum drum. Jay Jones using all of her experience here. As the second round ends, going into the third and final round. It's been a great effort so far from both fighters. Let's see what the third round brings.
here we go for the third round. The crowd of friends of GB Taekwondo making a big noise. We've got a mixture of GB athletes, Irish athletes, Croatian athletes. We've got sponsors such as our new kit sponsor, Castor. Hill Dickinson Lawyers. And some of our other sponsors in attendance tonight. Really excited to be able to put this event on. The first of these sort of evenings we're going to be putting on during the course of this cycle. Well, we'll be streaming live <laughs> exhibition taekwondo matches for you to enjoy. Both domestic fighters and international fighters as we've got tonight with our visiting Irish fighters and Croatian fighters. All part of being able to expose the GB Taekwondo team to more big fight night opportunities under the lights. Hopefully this will just be wearing your whistle before we come to Manchester with the European Championships in May. The British Taekwondo guys. Loads of experience putting on high quality competitions as shown with the 2019 Worlds. No doubt. This 2022 European Championships isn't going to be any different. So many of the guys fighting here tonight. The British fighters, Jack Wu from Ireland, and the Croatian team, no doubt, will all be there vying for medals. And for a lot of them, this is a first opportunity for them to get in front of a crowd, under the lights, fighting, and aiming to prove themselves. a shortened cycle this time in the build-up to Paris 2024. Every opportunity these guys get to fight and prove themselves is going to pay dividends. All of it valuable experience in the run-up to the Paris Games. Jay Jones certainly have a right on Paris 2024. So happened in Tokyo and earned back that Olympic gold medal that she made her own between London Games and Rio Games. Score sits at 24-3 with 12 seconds to go. Both fighters looking tired now, but it's no surprise after the amount of work that's been done. Layla, the young fighter coming through from the juniors, has done extremely well against the hugely experienced Jay Jones. Sure, the junior program will be really proud of her. Stepping in, she wasn't due to fight. It's fine, she stepped in late to take the fight. And she made Jade work for every single one of those points. Jay Jones has fought some of the absolute best in the world. And she has been the best in the world for years and years now. So it's no small feat for Layla to step in and take on Jade in this environment.
Yeah, he's already got an off spot to go into the... straight out in the ring, he's another one who's been talking to me about this fight for well over a week now, he's had his eyes on the, the opportunity to fight Jack Woolley of Ireland, tonight representing the blue team, Jack an extremely exciting and experienced fighter, he won a silver medal at the European Games, in the last couple of years, narrowly losing to the current Olympic champion, Vito of Italy, and having fought in Tokyo Olympic Games. <laughs> Mo Nor, another one whose junior career was affected by the COVID pandemic, but in recent times has really started to step into his role as a senior 58 kilo fighter. Extremely high energy. And I have a feeling we're in for a big first round here. Both fighters fencing right from the off. Already some elaborate shots going in. Jack, the taller of the two fighters, with certainly the longer reach on his legs. So Moe's going to have to work hard to get his way into the, into the action here. Conceding a shot on the way in there, Jack earning himself three points. Seen Jack training a bit this week, and it's clear his fitness is, is in a good place. Mo's got extremely high work rate when he fights. And I know some of the work he's been putting in with his coach Steve Jennings late, lately. He's not going to stop. Pace just easing a bit off that initial exchange. Jack throws one high and Mo lucky to avoid eating one in the head there. Mo's got a look in his eyes. He is desperate to get some points on the board early here. He knows what his ability is. And he knows this is the level he wants to be fighting at. These are the fighters he wants to be taking on more regularly. And again, these are another two fighters who come European Championships in May could well be fighting each other. Mo looking for shots going up underneath. Trying to sneak them underneath Jack's leg. Jack, the taller of the two fighters, working that leg high. But for now, it's still 3-0 to Jack Woolley of blue team. Punch attempted by Mo. Judges aren't giving it, though. Jack, great travelling from him on the front leg. Keeping Mo guessing. Keeping Mo hiding behind that cover. As Mo concedes a gam jump. Rapid move in there from Jack. Trying to get that foot over the top. Just upsetting Mo's pace here a little bit. Mo needs to get his head back in the game plan. They both look at the shots and they both snuck shots underneath. 7-2. Both registering two points each. Jack goes for a big scorpion kick. Must have been so close on scoring that one. Barely stopping for, for air either of them during that first round. Plenty to come in the second and third round, no doubt.
coaches. So much to say to their two fighters in between their line breaks there. When you've got that much action to cover from the first round, there's plenty to say in the breaks. Mo goes in the offensive to start off with. Working on that front leg, he's gone for a punch. And the side judges have stepped in. It was a headshot attempt from Mo there, but the referees had intervened just before, so we don't get to find out if that one goes on. Jack wipes his nose a bit. Loses, loses a point for kicking after the Calio, looking, kicking after the stoppage. He needs to get over that now and work again. Jack with rangy legs, looking for shots from all angles here. Even when tight in the clinch, he is a threat. Ooh, Mo, unfortunate not to land that one. It looked like he connected, but it doesn't register on the system. Judges give him that punch as well. He moved in fast. And there's a gamja against Jack Woolley for holding, so that's two points of good for, for Mo. Takes the score to 5-8. He goes for another one, doesn't look like he's getting given that one though. Jack working hard. Gamja given against Mo Noor in red. Strong fencing off from the blue, Jack Woolley. And he goes for another spinning shot to the head. As I said before, he's looking for shots from all angles. Mo's able to come away with the point, so it takes it to 8-9. And Mo scores again. That takes red team 10-9 up now. First time of this fight, red team leads blue team. Just forcing Jack Woolley in blue to think a little bit. But as predicted, Mo Noor does not want to give Jack Woolley one second to think during this fight. More strong fencing from Jack. He moves so well from that base leg. And again moves in. No score given to either player. The referee restarts him. Jack goes for that spin on and Mo sticks one round the back instead, finds Jack Woolley's head. Looked like Blue was looking for a stoppage there, but the referee's having none of it. That headshot connected hard with... That headshot connected hard with the Blue fighter. And yeah, he's bleeding from his nose. A lot of blood coming from Jack Woolley's nose after that headshot from Mo. He was just spinning as it connected. I don't think he'd have seen it till it was too late. Jack doing well, come out. Looks like after the headshot, Jack Woolley and Blue conceding the match. Unable to stop his nose from bleeding. So the win goes to Mo Noor in red, which he'll be happy with. Hopefully we'll see these two fight again in the European Championships in May.
go with our power. Presenting a, a rather fetching pastel castor kit that will keep some people in attendance happy. I'm not sure I'll be wearing it out myself, but Joe wears it well. So slightly different format for the Parataekwondo. It's one five-minute contest rather than the three two-minute rounds we've been watching so far. Each coach gets to call a 30 second time out within that time if they want to. As you're already seeing, there's no headshots. These girls are just gonna go for body shots through the whole five minutes. You can earn four points for a 180 kick, three points for a back kick or reverse to the body, two points for a standard kick to the body. You can punch, but it won't score. So I'm presuming they're just going to do that to exert dominance on each other. These girls train together in Manchester day in, day out. But it's safe to say that there'll, that there'll be a little bit more spice in this encounter compared to what we normally see in training. Just something wrong with the chest protector on Beth Munro here. Looks like we're going to change that. Beth came in, having been identified. Previously, having played netball. With the support of Disability Sport Wales. And training with Taekwondo Kamri down there. Came in for a trial with the academy with the academy in early 2021. Quickly found herself preparing for the European qualifier. Where she went and absolutely dominated her opponent and earned her qualification for the Paralympic Games. Which was Great Britain's third place in that game. She took three athletes there. As you mentioned, Amy Truesdale has been doing this sport considerably longer her whole life. And it is, in fact, Amy Truesdale's birthday today. I won't say which birthday it is. We see Beth score there, 2 now. Amy Truesdale, as I said before, two-time world champion, pioneer of para taekwondo, not just in Britain, but in the world. And at the 
the moment. The birthday girl looking for her first points. Beth, 4 0 to the good. Both fighters keeping busy. As I said, one round of five minutes. But the coach is in the corner. Can put a card in at any time. Andrew Deer, the coach for the GB Power Taekwondo setup, but he's not in the corner of either of these girls tonight. So instead, Amy's opted for Caden Cunningham and Joe Lane. And Beth has got Jody McHugh and Chloe Roberts. 2 5 now the score, Amy having brought one back. Beth getting another one on the, on the pad there. Amy seemingly unlucky at the moment not to register on a few of her kicks. <laughs> After some quick early exchanges, both fighters taking a breath now and looking for opportunity to find a more sustainable rhythm. Be interesting to see when these inexperienced coaches choose to play their timeout card. Great spinning attempt from Amy Truesdale. Her technical ability with spins and leg control. One of the top in international para taekwondo. opportunities. Amy there. Asking for the timeout card. Clearly getting frustrated with some of the shots she's throwing that aren't registering points. with Amy, getting her to stick to her game plan, find the right shots. Beth currently getting advice off Chloe it seems, whilst Jody McHugh keeps ice on the neck. Amy first out. Some clarity now of what she needs to do to bring the scores back even. Great spinning attempt from Amy. Beth moved in close to avoid scoring. Yeah, Gum done against Amy there for going to the floor. 2-8 the score now. Just under two minutes to go. Amy scores there, it's 4-8 now. 6-8, Amy gets another one on. She's finding her distance a little bit better now. This is exactly what she needed. She moves out, great movement from Truesdale. Better staying on the balls of her feet, moving forward, but Amy's able to counter and gets two points back. That takes it to a all. We're even Stevens here with one minute ten to go. Both fighters looking for opportunity with one minute to go now. It's even. By the way, Beth's able to get one back for the blue team. Ten eight now. What can Amy Truesdell do? Referee calling for action. Two tired fighters out there now. Best coaches, I think, have forgotten. They've even got a timeout card. But it doesn't seem to matter. Best just gets another two points on the board. It's 12 8 now. Amy needs to find two kicks at least to bring it back even. And that Gamdrang will lose her another point. Takes it beyond 
two normal kicks. Can she get a spinning score or similar to flip this on its head? If anyone can, it's Amy Truesdale. And with that, the end of the fight. Beth Monroe finishing the victor 13-8 tonight. Great effort from both fighters. Great exhibition of Power Taekwondo skill on tonight. is your mate Bianca Walton. What do you predict is going to go down in this fight, Jay Jones? Um, it's going to be a really tough fight and Doris is a very clever fighter. All the creations are to be fair, so it's going to be a very tough match. But I'm sure Bianca with her strength and aggression uh, should be able to break them down. Can I just say a big hello to all my family back home watching? Hello, Team Crazy! <laughs> We'll let you have that one, Jonesy. The family back home in Flint listening. I'm sure Luke's happy to get a shout out. He loves the attention. So, big, big fight this time. Bianca's got a red ribbon in her hair, so characteristic when she's in for a serious fight. Just sorting out each other's pads before we get going. Making sure everything's registering as it should, we're not going to want to miss any kicks for this encounter. So Doris... As I said in, in red tonight, but Harker from Croatia, 23 year old, currently ranked 29th in the world. But in the 2019 World Championships, she moved into the heavyweight division and managed to get herself a bronze medal. Coming up through the other, other semi to Bianca's side of the draw. She's also won a European bronze medal in 2020 and a Grand Slam silver medal in 2019. So plenty of high quality senior experience at a very young age. Bianca, the, the more experienced fighter, currently ranked first in the world. I won't say her age because I know she wouldn't be happy. But two time Olympic bronze medalist, three time world champion, most recently in 2019 the World Championships in Manchester where Doris earned bronze. Two-time European champion. And in 2017, had the great honor of winning every single Grand Prix that was put on that year. 
a phenomenal amount of consistency being shown by Bianca as she's fought international taekwondo. Currently, as Bianca's awarded another point, the score sits at 2-0, but there's plenty of fighting to go. One minute into this first round. Doris, the slightly smaller fighter, but extremely strong. And again, these two have been training together this week in preparation for today. And so know plenty about each other. We'll be looking for every weakness they can find to try and earn the win. As has been said so many times already, both these fighters will be in the European Championships in May. Remains to be seen whether Doris fights up at a heavier weight category or moves back to a to a previous minus 67 where she's been before. But that ability to move between the divisions is a rare skill. Bianca looking to continue her dominance at heavyweight. And as we really get into the meat and potatoes of this 2024 Paris Olympic cycle, Bianca is not going to want to give away one gold medal en route to what she believes is her destiny at winning an Olympic gold medal. Cagey first round, and it finishes 2-0 to Bianca. And we are going for the second round. Bianca versus Doris. <laughs> Bianca having trained in Manchester with the GB Taekwondo Academy for a number of years at this point. Been here since before the London Olympic Games where she used to train with Sarah Stevenson, previous GB world champion, double world champion. Learned a huge amount from her. Originally from Liverpool, where she's got her pizza restaurant, Descala Pizzeria. Wonder if they're streaming this in the pizza place tonight. Doris Pohl, who I believe is in the Croatian army, no less. So a fighter in every sense of the word. And we've got the red coach, Croatian coach, playing his card here, seeing something that he wants to check out. trying to get out of the way of some big shots from Bianca, the ref giving her a standing count. 
She seems good to go. Just go show the ferocity of which Bianca came in there. Currently sits at 5 0 blue. Bianca in. in the lead at present. Both fighters moving well, high work rate. Looking for opportunity. Doris moves in quick, looking for a shot, and she's given a punch there. 5 1 now the score. I'm sure, Bianca won't want to be giving away a single point more. She tries to keep her at distance. Doris able to get herself into the clinch. She moves in quick off the back of that referee's. I'm going to give him but Mike Harvey, the GB coach, just asking for a test of the head guards. It's a card taken for the privilege. Again, got our in-house in DJ, DJ Pumps, bringing the crowd up getting them going in between these stoppages. Head guard checked and we go again. Bianca, characteristic stance, arms out, looking to cover anything that might come. Doris taking a lower stance, trying to tee up some big shots. is the end of the second round. Another crazy round. Bianca currently sitting 6-1 up. Definitely plenty to fight for in this last round for Doris. More than capable of bringing that score back. She was unfortunate in the World Championships semi-final. I've been led for some of the fight. Eventually, the size and strength of the Chinese fighter counted against her. No doubt that's something she's been working on since that, since that day. No greater test for her as we go into this big year than fighting against Bianca tonight in Manchester. She's been more than game for it so far. Getting behind their fighter. Working the clinch, Bianca using their size and weight. Doris looking for shots. Unfortunately, goes to the ground, can see the damage 7 1. She's going to go looking for points now. Bianca right from the, the go, goes for the headshot. Characteristic tactic of the British fighter. When Doris decides to move in close distance, she can move quick though. And Bianca's having to stay wary of that. It's been a lively encounter between these two heavyweight females so far. Doris goes for one up top and it's very unfortunate not to land it. We start to head towards the final minute of this fight. The score sits at 7-1 with Doris Pohl, the Croatian in red, looking for an opportunity to close the, the gap. She goes for a punch there. It looked good to me. It looks like the corner judges are going for it as well. And it's been given, so that takes the score to 7-2. She needs more. There's no doubt she's going to go for it. Stepping and looking for opportunities. 55 seconds to go. The anchor went for one up top. She's able to get round it and close the gap. The anchor breathing heavy now. She's been in big fights like this plenty of times before. She knows how to see him out.
Doris going for multiple shots, keeping Bianca on her toes. The Croatian coach putting in his big effort here as his athlete, I think. Taking every shot that she's taking as he encourages his fighter on. Bianca having to react off the back foot a lot so far this round as Doris goes in search of those extra points she needs. Keeps up a big punch. Not given. Or is it? The judges give that punch. Closing out. This is our last fight of the evening. And it's definitely been worth worth it so far. Bianca having to keep busy. Doris not willing to lie down with only a few seconds left to go. Closes out the match. Bianca wins 9-2 for the Blues. Great encounter. And hopefully, depending on what weight category Doris chooses for the European Championships, it's another one.